that there is a principle in the spirit realm called how to find God when you've lost him. And if you don't understand how it works, you cannot preserve what operates on your life. You must know the way back. You must know how to find what you have lost. Because with God, he has not taken it. You've just lost it. You reconstruct and rebuild. See, some people don't know that that was the secret with David. David knew how to find God. It's almost as though in the mistake he did with Uriah and his wife, you'd almost think that was the end of that man's destiny because we saw many men in scripture who messed up like that and never came back. But David knew how to break before God. He knew the way of God. He knew. He knew. He knew that there's a place I know that if I go, he will remember his covenant with me. You must understand the power that chose you because many are called, but few are chosen. Don't think that there's anything coming your way that is shocking God. Oh, they fired you. I'm so shocked. God ain't shocked. He saw that firing and still chose you. He saw that sickness and still chose you. He knew that if it's in your body, it can't, you can't live for five years. But he chose you for something that would require you to be on the earth for 60 or 70 years more. The only difference is here, you have to make the choice either to lean and connect to what he called you for. You'll not have to worry about what's in that body. He can restore it. That's just the way of God. Don't think that because you've got an incurable disease, therefore the cancer of God on your life is done. No! He can see it with all of that and still say, I have said my counsel shall stand forever. My counsel shall stand forever. Nothing can take away from it. You can take away from it. But he, you as an individual, you can, you can say I've refused. <laughs> I've refused. But nothing outside you and God in that covenant can take it away. Nothing except you. When he said, I've called you, he meant it. He knows who you are. He knew your weaknesses and your strengths. Don't think you surprise him. Don't, you don't act before him. He knows your heart. He knows how crazy you can be. He knows. Please don't fool God. Don't play. Don't play. Don't play. Don't play. You know some of you have ways where you go to God and then you act like he's not seeing. He sees everything. He says, crazy girl, I still chose you. And, 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 and now we shall deal with these issues. But unless you wake up and say that, ah, I think I'm not worth this. You see, you can refuse it. You can disconnect from it. I've seen people who have died because they said no to what God gave them, to what God prepared for them, to what God aligned and arranged ready for them. Yeah, you chose to reject what he gave you. But he didn't take it away. He didn't take it away. He does not take it away. He does not take it away. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Refuse any voice that is contrary to what God has spoken in his word concerning you. I hear the spirit of the Lord tell me that there are people here at the sound of my voice. God is going to rebuild you. He's going to rebuild even the most broken spaces. The things you thought cannot be reversed are being reversed under this anointing. And he is saying, my counsel shall stand forever. When he chose David, 
The Bible says he gave him the kingdom and his sons to come by a covenant of salt. And he told him, if your boys go off the way, he said, I will discipline them. This is what God tells David. If they go off, he says, I will discipline them and restore them, but I will never take it out of your house. That is why I tell people, even with the greatest mistakes you have made, come back in the presence and sit. Even when you mess yourself up, come back in the presence and tell God, I'm crazy, but I'm here. Deal with me. I have my madness, but I'm here. Present yourself and just stay present. He will deal with all of that nonsense and take it out of your life. But never disconnect from the presence. However weak you are, come with your weakness. However mad you are, however crazy the world you're in is, still come and say, God, I know I'm crazy, but I still trust the counsel that you have over my life. Deal with me, I am here. Let me tell you, there is no transformation like staying in the presence of God. That's what David discovered. That is why even after that messing up, and the judgment befalls him and Absalom turns Israel against him and David knew that they were going to kill him the moment he gets his wives to run away the first thing he got was the covenant box the presence and then he took with him the priest because David doesn't need a country he would lose a kingdom he would lose all the gold he would lose all, lose all the silver but what he could not lose was those two the Ark of the Covenant and the priest Zadok. And you know what? The Hebrew word Zadok means one that imputeth righteousness. Those are the two things that he carries when he's chased out of Israel. Absalom is telling them, this man is not a king. He killed a man once and took his wife. Then he speaks all this stuff and then turns Israel against him. And one day, the very people he bled for, sweated for, was ready to die for, turned their, heart, their hearts against him. They turned for Absalom. And then they, 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 they wanted to kill him, David. He knew, as long as I can keep the presence, as long as I understand the righteousness that has been imputed unto me by faith and not of works, Zadok is with me. Eventually, if you read the scripture, that very God brought David back to his throne not by power, not by might, but by His Spirit. Lose anything, but never lose the place that He has got. Never lose the place of His presence. Lose anything, but never lose. As long as you can still keep that place and you know how to break and bend and die before Him. As long as you can go to that altar for that sacrifice and just as long as you just understand his heart concerning his covenant with you you'll be amazed at how much God is pitiful you remember the Bible says the end of the Lord that he is what in James he is pitiful and tender of mercy why would there have been pity and mercy on Job if Job had not done something wrong Job had broken the hedge but even in his indifference God still says this is my end I intend that I'll restore this man and rebuild him you will be fine trust the word of God raise your voice and thank God